The American Freedom Train is racing across our nation, carrying precious cargo, your America. The most dazzling light and sound displays ever conceived. Over 500 priceless documents and Americana have been contributed by America for Americans. They are yours to see during this once-in-a-lifetime journey. The Freedom Train comes to your hometown only once. It's an experience you just can't miss. And don't let your kids miss it either. Get on board your American Freedom Train. Welcome to Brick Trains. I'm Joey, and we're back to a layout uh, update. It's actually going to be more than a layout update. I'm actually starting on a new project, a new train. I'm going to do a new mock. Uh, Lego just released a new train, a little four-wide, high-speed train. Pretty disappointing, so I'm going to make my own train. Uh, actually, I have been, you know, when I was a little kid, they had the Bicentennial, right? 200-year anniversary of the United States. It's a pretty big deal. And they had this train that went around and had all the history or had history on the train. You could go, it would stop at, stop at a whole bunch of cities. It was out 18 months, I think. So from 75 to 76, late 76, it, it, uh, it ran and you could go and visit. You could see the history. There was, there was a lot of cool artifacts and stuff on there. Now, when it came to our town, which I lived in Evansville, which is just down the road a little bit from where I live currently, uh, it was in June and I honestly think because I don't remember visiting this visiting the freedom train I actually think we were in Florida at the time doing Disney World it was my first visit to Disney World uh, as a as a child uh, it may have been one of the very few times that I was at Disney as a child <laughs> I do remember being five or six at the time, it was my sister did not get to go. She was only, uh, she'd have been one. She'd been one or two. One. At any rate, she was way too small, so she stayed with my grandparents. Now, there is a picture of my grandfather, my dad's dad, standing on the nose of the Reading T1 or the AFT1, American Freedom Train 1, which was the engine that was used for the East, all right? Out west, down south, they used the daylight, right? Very iconic. It was painted red, white, and blue. It's the engine that you see most of the time when you see American Freedom Train pictures. Um, but it couldn't come back east. It couldn't get, it couldn't make all the turns and the weight. It was much heavier than apparently the Reading T1. Also, I didn't intend this to be a history lesson for the American Freedom Train, but apparently it is. Also in Texas, because Texas just has to be Texas. Uh, Texas, Texas, you do Texas, right? Um, they had the Texan, uh, which was a 10-wheeler, I believe. Uh, so that that is the third train that is officially recognized as an American Freedom Train for that train. There were a lot of diesels that helped as helper units through the through the years. And in fact, I think in Evansville, they used a diesel. I don't think the T1 actually made it downtown because... Where they actually put the Freedom Train is in a very precarious place. In fact, those tracks are not there anymore. Um, but they did. They got it downtown Evansville. Uh, so I think there was a, a diesel. Because I do remember with my grandfather and my dad, we went out to one of the uh, we went out to one of the yards, one of the railroad yards, and took pictures with that diesel. I don't have that picture of that diesel. Um, it's in one of the family albums somewhere. So there's a picture of me standing next to a diesel that was all painted up red, white, and blue. But it wasn't an official. It was just a helper. They were kind of localized. So what am I going to do? I am doing the Reading T1. Or a T1. Uh, so it is a 484 configuration. It was painted dark blue with a black nose. Um, Dakota is super excited about another blue train. No, I just got done doing, I can't see it, well, it's on the other side of the track right now, the locomotives. I just got done doing the Hummingbird not too long ago, and it was a dark blue LNN, so dark blue. Uh, so he's he's not real thrilled about another dark blue train, but it was the train that was supposed to be in Evansville, and it's pretty... it's pretty iconic looking train, so I'm gonna, that's the one I'm going to do, and I like black steam engines, even though it's going to be dark blue. So what do I have done so far is... The chassis that's it i i have the chassis for the locomotive oh and i'm starting on some of the cars this is a showcase car right here and it had three windows there were two showcase cars and like 10 display cars but the showcase car had 
there was one had um, uh, let's see a moon uh, the moon rover so they had the test vehicle that was still on earth uh, it had a old fire truck and a Oldsmobile that won some kind of speed ran ran record there was a Liberty Bell mock-up uh, which was a bigger twice the size a map and then um, something else there was there were six six items that came in these cars and you could see them they were lit when they would pull up you could walk all around them the uh, it, let's see these were the showcase cars and then the display cars display cars were all strung together there was 10 of them and you rode through a conveyor belt through all 10 cars and you there was all the history so it was like a big history rolling history museum pretty pretty cool from what i understand again i didn't get to go i did i missed it i think i was doing mickey mouse not the freedom train thing so and you know for us to do mickey mouse that was a big deal back in back in back then for us um because it was <laughs> it's expensive now it was expensive then and we weren't rich so very much middle class all right so let's get a look at the chassis here this is what this is my this is what i got I, this is what I spend most of my time trying to get this thing to work and it's probably one of the harder parts because I like I have a six-year-old grandson and we play train we have a five-year-old grandson not a six-year-old five-year-old grandson and we gotta play train so these things gotta work they can't be falling apart they can't be uh you know going slow because you, as you know trains apparently all do the same thing that NASCAR does they go as fast as they possibly can until they fly off the side of the layout so let's look at the chassis all right here's the chassis this is our four eight four and the big red blocks are just weights they're just the they're just there to hold down the chassis to keep it in the track because you know there is just no weight on this train right now and i want to go through this switch right here this is a trix bricks it's a 3d printed version of the lego switch the problem with the lego switch is that you uh one is going straight so that one is going that one's turning is that going to focus that one's turning and that one's going straight okay so you go straight through there and then the other train would curve through here the problem with that is that your trains have to be going opposite directions for them to both go straight and that's good unless again you got a five-year-old grandson that thinks they should be racing all the time that means there's no way to use the lego version of the track have two trains going the same direction and go straight through this switch this trix bricks version allows that because these frogs switch independently so we're going to switch these both out on this side so they're curving in on both sides and these are set in, meaning they're going straight, both sides. This is also the worst, tightest curve. You have a, an in and in and out, um, and this is the same radius, approximately the same radius as the tight Lego curve. So if my train can make it through this, then it should be able to make it on any Lego track, and that's important that we can make it around the tight radius Lego track. So let's give it a try. We're gonna push it through and watch what happens. So far so good, made it through, made it through, you can hear the frog clicking, I'm just going to keep pushing this until the car gets all the way through the frog, I'm going to pull it back straight, alright, and then let's go over it again, this time the other way, you can see the Technic act or lift arm, we used a a three Technic lift arm there, and a two Technic lift arm there. And that's just to give us a little more distance out here in the front. We're making it good. You hear it clicking the frog? Because as it goes through, it's having to move this frog, where's it at right there? We're having to move this out of the way. So it's springing through. There's the click sound. So that's, that's a good sound. All right, one more time. Let's go through real close this time. We see our Technic arm. We have two pivots. There's the worst right there. We actually have a little bit of movement where it's going to come closer together and then further apart. 
all right this one's not going to move it's just going to pivot along those two technic pins now we're going to roll back that's the chassis that's our 484 chassis it is very similar to like our berkshire which we have right here again our berkshire is a two four two eight eight four with our truck we have four four wheels on the truck eight drive wheels and then two on the pony truck on the front truck so it uses a very similar system this is this is my new push rod i think this works really good for our drivers this axle is this axle pin is stationary and everything just slides back and forth on that i think that looks decent and it works well forward and back which is important getting everything to clearance each other right where if you have the the rod itself moving it wants to hit the trucks the leading trucks if they're not high enough getting them too high causes them to bind up they don't want to bind up going backwards and i think this this particular setup here has worked the best so far there's very little clearance right there but it does miss and then that Technic piece just rides back and forth, meaning there is no clearance issues up here because the rod doesn't come through. The Hudson, we have Hudson, we have Berkshire, we have the big boy, and these are things that I've been working on. I've looked at the Disney train, the um, the Emerald Knight. They all have different configurations for drivetrains, and I don't want to go with one of the third party um, drivetrains. I want I want it to be as much Lego as possible. I'm using the 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 lego wheels um and i'm um, created drivetrain so that's all at lego parts i yeah i know i'm trying to it is it i i have a tricks bricks track and we have wide radius curve now this wide radius curve is brick tracks this is injection molded wide radius curve lego take a hint get in business with these people uh this is really good track right here makes for really nice sweeping curves yeah it just looks like it looks a lot better so lego doesn't make it i'm not a lego purist but i do like using as much lego as i possibly can so they don't make they don't make the wide radius track so i don't feel too bad about it and the switch that they made this double crossover for double wide train or for a two track layout Theirs doesn't work. It, I'm sorry, Lego. You just you messed that up, and uh, I feel bad for everybody that's paying big bucks for those, thinking they're going to get something useful, and they're not going to get something useful. It, I guess it's fine if it's in a switch yard or something, but if it's on your main line, it's it's not very good. Now, again, I will say this Trix Bricks version, which is a 3D printed version, it's it's wearing out. It's wearing out, and I've only had it a couple years now. This track gets a lot of use, but it's it's wearing out. I don't so. Again, this wasn't a review of those products. It was just going to be about my new American Freedom Train, my AFT, uh, with a Redding T1 uh, as my power source, my locomotive. And then there's like 24 cars. There's the first one. Pull it out here. Like I said, that's the showcase car. We get a roof on it. Uh, and then we ha I'm building all of the little things inside. I think I'm going to go with these. Instead of blue, they're going to be clear instead of these. Because the original ones have like four panels. And they're very distinctive panels. And not just one big clear window. So I, th I think I'm going to go with that and break it up into panels. And then over here, I have one, two, three, four more cars. This is going to be a display car here. And then those three, at least one of them is going to be the tail car. And this is going to be the track that the Freedom Train is going to live on. Cause this is kind of a dead area back here, but I think it'll make a good spot for people, my mini figs, to come and visit the Freedom Train. And uh, I don't think I'll be able to make all 24 cars, but we'll make a pretty decent representation of them. We'll get as many of them made as we can. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my current project. So American Freedom Train. I know it probably in everybody's cup of tea. Um, but I I want to do it. It's my it's been a it's been a long project for me that I've I've worked on for years tinkering with in digital form. So you know I've I've got a lot of these models already made in in Eldraw or like uh, Bricklink Studio software. 
uh, except I use Eldraw version, which is an open source version. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I've been tinkering with these for for years, uh, and uh, I think it's going to finally come to come true. We're finally going to have it. We're having one on the layout, so. Uh, I think that's all I got for this update. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. We'll have more updates as I get a little further at each step. Again, this is not a how to, this is not going to be how to build a steam engine or this is not a Lego steam engine. This is not going to be a Lego how to of how to make a passenger train. I will show those things as we get through them. I'll show you what the, the different pieces and parts and stuff that I've built. Um, and to some degree how they work and how I built them, why I built them. It's all going to be six wide, not eight wide, but it's going to run. It's going to, it may, where I lack in a little bit of detail, it is going to be solid and it's going to, it's going to run on this layout and a five-year-old can play with it and not have a whole lot of problem. And that's important to me that it has plenty of playability. So I think that's it. That's it for now. So thanks for watching. So you've made it to the end of the line. That must mean it's comment contest time. The American Freedom Train. How to get it everywhere, uh, all over the country, and how to know it was going to fit, and how they know it wasn't going to fit, where it was going to fit. There was a train that went out before the American Freedom Train. What was the name of that train? First correct answer in the comments, and I'll feed you to the top.